Hey y'all, welcome back to The Snake's Paw. Heads up, today's episode of Noir City Blues is a continuation of our last episode. So if you haven't heard that already, this one will make a lot more sense if you go back and check it out first. It's called Noir City Blues, Episode 6, Me and My Shadows, Part 1. Also, in case you haven't noticed before, we often include some outtakes at the end of these episodes. We have a lot of fun in the recording room, and things got particularly ridiculous this time. So stay till the end of the episode, if that sounds like a good time. All right, here's North City Blues, Episode 7, Me and My Shadows, Part 2. <laughs> Night gets long in Noir City, long enough that the criminals work in shifts, and even the stars mostly handed in their resignations a long time ago. Then there's me and the rest of the lifers. We all ended up here in our own way. Noir City's an easy place to find. No matter where you are, Noir City is downhill. And if you slip and fall one day, you might find yourself here when you get back up. Us stubborn souls take this place as a personal challenge, and come night, You'll find us sprinting in our hamster wheels, just to prove we could get out if we ever tried. And even for us, sometimes a night stretch is so long we need to take a couple weeks break before we can finish it off. When we left off, I was indulging in just such a blackout. Unconsciousness is popular in Noir City, and I'm as big a fan as any. And sure, this particular blackout came courtesy of chloroform, which isn't usually my drug of choice. But a night's sleep is a night's sleep, even with your wrists tied behind your back. I always was a side sleeper anyway. So it figures that in the time it took for my kidnappers to get me from point A to point B, I got ganged up on by every nightmare in the book. There was a time when my nightmares used to be solitary predators, but in Noir City, even bad dreams are organized. The past 24 hours alone gave me plenty to worry about. The escape of every vengeful criminal I'd ever locked up. Detective? More like dictator. Die! The new drug going around on the street, an addictive drink called Release the Beast, that transformed those who drank it into strangers with unknown agendas. I'm a whole new woman. Sometimes. The mysterious thief who turned out to be the alter ego of my most reliable crime tech. The name's Sutton. All of us Sutton. And soliloquy long. A stranger abducted as she'd arrived in town. A mysterious woman with no memories, who I might already be too late to save. So yeah, even as nightmares go, this one was garish. But whatever demented child was drawing this dream was hell-bent on using every crayon in the box. I saw the old station, like it was the day I left. Blood on the wall, door hanging off its hinges. I saw her the way she was a few days before that when everything still seemed all right. Geared up for an adventure, ready for anything except what happened. I even saw something that might have been you, Chief. It looked just like I remember seeing you last. Accusatory, disappointed, like I'd betrayed her and you and even the memories themselves. Like I'd invited Noir City's forces to invade and conquer the inner sanctum where those memories live. I gave it my best, Chief. I tried to wake up, tried to protect that place by exiling myself all over again. But my eyelids felt like an executioner's hood. So, Goon 2, you think this abduction is worthy of a Bachelor of Bigness and Badness degree? I've never seen wrists tied so badly. Didn't your boss say not to hurt him? It's all gone about as wrong as it could go. What do you mean you thought Goon 1 would do a better job? There's no job for you here anymore. Rotten luck. Better luck next time. For now, just remember, if you want to minimize the harm, you've got to do the harm yourself. You did this to yourself, Dick. My hands are tied. Not gonna lie, Chief. I was about to give you a piece of my mind. I know, it was only Dream You, but he's the only version of you I get to talk to these days. But when I opened my eyes to look you in the face, Instead, I saw the Tsar of Noir City himself, B.T. Dubs, with a golf club raised over his head. And it all came back. The ambush in the prison, and my promise to Dubs that I'd ignore the missing woman. 
A promise I hadn't broken. Yet. I didn't think I'd made a sound, but maybe Dubs heard my eyes opening. He gave me a glance and looked back down at the ball he was about to putt. Richard, wait a moment, would you? I'm ten for ten, or whatever they say in this peasant sport. A swing and a... Oh, look at that. Proof that I am but a fallible mortal. What a world, what a world. Where are we? Aboard the SS Large S, my yacht mansion. Your fancy digs, huh? This is a pretty plush kidnapping. Kidnapping? This is a job interview. Come, have a tour. It was hard to tell what was real aboard the Largesse. The sky couldn't be real. Too many stars. Or maybe Dub had just offered them better wages on his boat. And the waterfall? What makes a waterfall real, anyway? There was water, and it was falling. Seemed real enough. Don't interviews usually involve questions? Hmm, offering me the opening move? Very well. There's been a death in the family, and it leaves quite the opening. You mean Rick? I always preferred to call him Rickard. Or Rickery, whatever his name was. Employees, best not to get too familiar. Same with the goons. They're always insisting that I call them goo. Wait, you had me ambushed and chloroformed so you could offer me Rick's job? Killing people and sabotaging corruption trials and- Rickert was a specialist. Here at Dubs Enterprises, the role is always constructed to the talents of the individual, with opportunities for further training, of course. What if I don't want the job? What if? What if you weren't graying? What if your wages kept up with inflation? What titillating little hypotheticals, eh? But if you prefer, think of it as keeping the job you already have. Regardless, it's time for a test. A test, huh? Maybe you haven't heard, but I was top of every class in police academy. And then I didn't show up to graduation. Acing the test and then lighting it on fire is what I do. What'll it be? Fight my way off your boat? Hotwire the engine? Seduce the navigatrix? Uh, none of the above, I'm afraid. But you're right that it's good old multiple choice. Simple. Will you help your friend at the crime tech with the transformation troubles? Or will you pursue the mystery of the missing Missy? So it's this again. You asked me to ignore a case. A detective never- uh, Miss Detective, I would never accuse you of being naive, but- you're being stupid. Do you think you can solve every crime in this city? That you'll never have to make a hard choice between two important things? Or what? Do you think that any two cases you're assigned will always turn out to be connected? As a matter of fact, you'd be surprised how often- The answer is no, Miss Detective. Sometimes it's one or the other. And deep down, you know it. After all, you let the case of the missing woman sit for a whole month. Until recently, you seem to have forgotten all about her. A lot of people in this town need my help. Anyway, I'm just a detective. The chief is the one who calls the shots. Only reason I'm paying attention to this case is because he's been on my back about it. He has, has he? Notwithstanding, there are still higher authorities than the chief. And this incredibly simple test can prove to them that you know how to prioritize. Shoot straight, Dubs. This isn't about proving I can juggle. These cases are as connected as they get, and the connection is you. You put money behind Bart when he invented his pizza-flavored soda that turns people into bad English accent versions of themselves. And just to cause more chaos, you got Bart access to the prison to test his creation. That way the prisoners would all get transformed into new people and released. Sorry, as I'm saying this, it all sounds incredibly contrived. Mm. Imagine having to listen to it. And you found Soliloquy and had her kidnapped. All for this creepy test of yours. Very good, detective. B minus and bonus points for good pronunciation. But you see, I didn't find Soliloquy. I created her. You're her father? What? No. Gotcha, sorry. That's just been the revelation so many other times. Uh, no, I created Soliloquy for this test. Since you tumbled into town, you've shown potential, but I worry that you have an incurable case of ISS, involuntary savior syndrome. 
Admittedly, there hasn't been a mystery you couldn't solve or a bleating innocent you couldn't save, but one wonders if those behaviors are compulsive. One would almost think there was a moment in your past when some woman desperately needed help you couldn't give, and that to this day you are throwing yourself into every breach, hoping to make up for that failure. Whoa, was I dreaming loudly? Hence, soliloquy. The perfect damsel. And by perfect, of course I mean dull as dry toast. Perhaps you've learned that she has no memories. In fact, there is nothing to her at all. Nothing to clash with your ideal. She is made up entirely of clues, occasionally dropped in your path to see if you take the bait. You're bluffing. If all that was true, why would you tell me? It's true, I shouldn't. It was meant to be a secret. But I understand human foible. Sometimes we need a shortcoming brought to our attention before it can be rectified. And to prove that I'm rooting for you, I offer you a lead. This friend of yours with the transformation troubles, as you've learned, his condition is the collateral damage of progress. The leaps of progress currently underway in beverage technology. But word has it that BevTech research is on the verge of another breakthrough, a formula that would reverse the condition and turn two people back into one. It may come to market soon, if you'll just have some patience. The yacht mansion left me ashore near my car. My gas tank was nearly empty, but still, I couldn't help flooring the pedal before I'd even put the car in gear. Dubs had gotten in my head and I was spinning my wheels trying to figure out his game. The clear, simple image I'd had of a helpless stranger was paling against a paralyzing profusion of possibilities. And even if she was real, the surest thing of all was that I was very, very late. Then another fact flashed into my head. Dubs had caused all this chaos just so there would be too many problems for one detective to solve. And he was betting on me being just one detective. Based on all precedent, he was right. But if I was going to beat Dubs, I'd have to shake things up. I was going to need our best crime tech. Frank might be captive to his Release the Beast addiction, but maybe now I knew enough to get him out of his cage. I walked into the bar to find Bart mobbed with shady-looking customers. <laughs> One at a time, fellas. There's enough for least the beast for everyone. Who's next? Me? Please? Me? I've been standing here waving for an hour. Hey, I know you. Flank tightly. I saw you in the paper. Will you sign your mugshot for me? Sure. Hand it here. But hey, while I've got you, could I get a 72-pack of- Aw, thanks. This is gonna look great in my new upstairs bathroom. You bought a house? Better. I'm building a house. And since there ain't a more beautiful phrase in the English language than upstairs bathroom, that's where I'm starting construction. The way sales are going though, won't be long before it's done and I can get started on the cellar door. So that's what you're doing with your dirty cash from Dubs. Oh no, Dick. The cash doesn't come from Dubs. The cash comes from the customers when they buy the product that gets made in the factory that got built with the loan from Dubs, which I'll start paying back as soon as I finish the house. He built you a factory? Right on the back of the bar, and still we can barely keep up. Bart, do you get why all these customers are so eager? Have you tried this drink? Oh no, I never drink my own medicine. Do it all by smell. But you know what it does, right? It changes you into a totally different person. Sure. That's what folks come here for. A change of pace, a chance to leave it all at the door. You, for example, when I think of all the times you started singing traditional Irish ballads in here, I could swear it was a whole other person. Never mind me. Look at Frank. Look how bad he feels. Frank, tell him how bad you feel. It's like there are fingers pressing on the back of my eyes, but you could just give me the drink and I would- Dick, I don't think you understand what my job is. I sell people what makes them feel good. No promises how long it's gonna last or how you're gonna feel when it wears off. Only promise is you're gonna like it. And people like this. Look, I just need to take away one of your customers. All I need is Frank. Dubs told me you were working on an antidote. What's it made of? Dick, I don't want the antidote. Sorry, Dick. You heard the man. Here you go, Flink. 
Who's next? Dick, I'm going to hold off drinking this as long as I can, but... Hey, back there when we were looking at the art heist, I'm sorry I lied to you. You didn't lie. You just very carefully phrased the truth to mislead me. But it's okay, because that Oliver guy made you do it. And we're done with him. All you have to do is not drink that drink you're clutching very tightly and staring at. Lovingly. Like it's a child. Oliver isn't forcing me to do anything. We're friends. Frank, friends don't press on the backs of friends' eyes. Plus, he didn't act very friendly. He called you several names that honestly went over my head, but I seriously doubt they were compliments. That's just how he talks. But we've been writing each other letters for weeks, and he's a whole different- Jeez, he said you were pen pals. I thought he was talking about prison. See, he would be so happy to know he impressed you. And when we were in prison, the only people to impress were criminals, so he got really attached to the idea of doing a crime on his own, which, of course, I could never help him do, but... If I'm eventually going to get off this drink and end his existence, the least I can do is give him one good experience. So I wrote him instructions for an art heist that would look impressive without doing too much damage, and I called in that sockeye guy to give him the test so he'd get to enjoy some recognition. But everything went wrong, and now it wouldn't be right to end things this way, so I can't take the antidote yet. Frank, I never thought I'd hear you justifying aiding and abetting a criminal. And now that I hear you doing it, it's... Adorable. Thank you? But you can't let it get in the way of your job. With everything going on, we don't need another guy committing crimes. We need you helping solve them. I was kind of banking on you wanting to do everything on your own and barely noticing I was gone. And I wish I did feel that way, but that's what Dubs expects. So I have to surprise him by having friends. Plus, I think I could maybe actually use some help. I've kind of been through it today. I'm missing puns. That's just not like me. And Dubs just kidnapped me. Uh, I feel you. Captivity is rough. And I was in a collapsing building. I know. So was I. Plus, I've barely slept these last couple days. I have two people using my body. I haven't slept in a week, and I'm addicted to a thing that is inches from my face and is taking all my self-control to keep talking to you. Okay. You win. But just because you're more messed up doesn't mean I'm any less messed up. And speaking of messed up... I think you picking the stranger who you just met over me is messed up. No, I'm not choosing between helping you and helping him. I think I can help you both by letting him help you. What? Oliver doesn't need another crime. He just needs another chance, a way to leave his mark. And solving a crime might be just as good as committing one. You want me to ask him to help beat dubs? I get it. He's inexperienced, he's only existed for a week, you're gonna have to give him pointers and keep him on task. But even then, he is so much more qualified than I am right now. I promise. Now can I please drink this awful liquid pizza? Yeah, all right. See you on the other side. What is going on here? I leave Frank a note. Got to do another heist tonight. I'm gonna need the body. Please fuel it up and have it ready to go. And what does he do? He goes to the pub, and the body clearly has not had a meal or a nap. Blinking roommates. Oliver. Who? Ah, uh, uh, frack no. I've had about as much of you as I planned to tolerate. It wasn't my idea. Frank asked me to help you have a good time tonight. What a nice, uninvited gesture of pity, but no thank you. I came this close to pulling off my big heist. I'm gonna go finish it off. Frank literally scripted that heist for you, so I think we should do what he says. So it's all Frank, is it? I'm perfectly capable of looking at his instructions and extrapolating the general principles of criminality. You were just saying the body isn't in any shape yeah, to- Yeah, well, I've got an underdog redemption arc just cut right out for me. Plus, you just got out of prison. Compelling origin story. And you haven't slept in a week. Relatable obstacle. How will our hero overcome it? Oh, look, there's a presumably caffeinated beverage in my hand. With this kind of plot armor, I must be the protagonist of this episode. I'm not even sure what you drinking that would do. And anyway, caffeine doesn't give you skills. It just makes you panicked and anxious and emotionally volatile. Ugh, why is everybody so mean? <laughs> what did I do? What did you do? You just sat there through my Bachelor of Bigness and Badness test while Sockeye humiliated me. And now you're going to try to make me feel like I'm this burden on Frank? Let me tell you something. Frank might be miserable, but at least he can drink something and turn into someone else. I'm stuck being the someone else. I can't even get an English accent right. Look, for what it's worth, 
Whatever you and I get up to tonight, we're gonna hear a lot of bad English accents, and I'm betting yours is the least worst one out there. Seriously, for only having had a week of existence to work on it, you're doing a great job. Ugh, I wish my accomplishments didn't need the benefit of context to sound impressive. Well, look, I know you got written off by the criminal establishment tonight, but it just so happens that right now I could use a hand getting one over on the guy at the top. If that sounds interesting or, you know, objectively impressive. Tell me this. Is he a condescending jerk like Solomon Sockeye? Oh, a hundred times worse. Then count me in. I'd succeeded at getting Oliver on my team, which wasn't what I'd set out to do, and I wasn't sure I was any better off for it, so I decided to go double or nothing and look for even more backup. And let's just say... there weren't a lot of options. Richard? Dr. Morgan Jordan! How are things at the morgue? Absolutely dead. And not in a good way. I keep hearing that the entire prison was released and a crime wave is coming. But so far, I've just been waiting like a nervous schoolgirl the night before prom, sitting by the phone and alphabetizing my scalpels. Well, listen, maybe it would be fun if you were to leave the morgue and come out and help me on a crime scene. M me? Is it some kind of corpse analysis problem? I can just talk you through it. All you need is a kitchen knife, or a sharp stick, or just a really well-filed fingernail. It's not so much your specialty I need, Dr. Morgan Jordan. Just a spare pair of eyes. Oh, I have lots of- Sorry, poor wording. I just thought your analytical skills might be helpful. It's hard to imagine a stranger idea. I'm profoundly unsuited. I barely know how to navigate the outside world. I sleep here most nights. Whoa. Like, inside the morgue? Oh, yes. We keep the drawers very comfortable. And besides, this place would fall apart without me. I have to micromanage. You'd be surprised at how hard it is to find good help. Yes, I'm starting to understand that. I mean, I'm so obviously the wrong choice that I can only imagine one reason why you might ask me. It must be that I'm the protagonist of this episode. I think you're probably 100% right about that. In that case, who am I to decline the wily advances of destiny? I'm on my way! So the motley crew assembled. Oliver and I met up with Morgan Jordan near the seedy hotel where Soliloquy had gone missing. Beverly? Beverly? I need you to stop being hysterical and listen to me. Hold it up to the phone and squeeze it. Once more? That's definitely a spleen. Fill out the paperwork and don't do anything else with my explicit instruction. Bodies start rolling in as soon as you left? It's to be expected. Protagonists are always managing multiple problems at the same time. Well, gentlemen, let's get down to business. All right. Men, we're an unlikely team. A detective, a thief, and a mortician. Maybe that's not a classic formula for success. Maybe the odds are against us. But I think we can safely say, there's no way Dubs is going to see this coming. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Anyway, we're here to investigate the kidnapping of an innocent woman. She might be a real-life innocent woman with a personality and history and stuff, or she might be just the idea of an innocent woman. Along the way, we're also likely to run into interference. The entire prison is on the loose, and we need to make sure we don't become targets. It's time for some Police Academy. Lesson one, moving silently. You've got to sort of sneak and swagger at the same time. That way folks won't hear you, but if they look, they'll think you're sneaking up on someone for charming reasons and they won't want to ruin the surprise. Here, try it. Good. Now my personal trick. Try describing it in your head as you do it, preferably in the past tense, like this. I wafted in a whispering waltz across the walkway. I mime the meter of a mute berserker. I patter over the pavement to the pulse of the most private possible polka. Good enough for now. Let's move on. Training was giving me flashbacks, but I couldn't afford the time on memory lane. We needed to get on to lesson two, roles in the investigation. I was dreading this one. 
I'm pretty good at the knowing what other people should do part, but I always forget to say it out loud. Fortunately, I determined that Oliver would be a... Um, Oliver, you're our professional ex-con. I can't be expected to remember everyone I've ever locked up, so I need you to see them coming. All right, less gentleman thief, more human Rolodex. Not the career I anticipated, but I am full of undiscovered potential. I'm afraid I won't be much use in that department. It's safe to say that I know the typical Noir City criminal inside, but not out. No worries, Dr. Jordan. You'll help me with evidence gathering and analysis. If we come across a criminal, you can observe from a distance and try to figure out their strengths and weaknesses. Here, let's practice. Lesson three, encounters with hostiles. Oliver, from this excellent surveillance position we snuck to, what do you see? Frike, there's one right now, right across the street. I remember her. They call her Blunt Force Blanca. We're probably safe from this one. See, slung over her shoulder, that huge, heavy-looking bag with the dollar sign on it? Safe to say this tick has probably sucked all the blood it can for one night. Wait, do you mean actual blood? Morgan Jordan, shush. Did someone say blood? Oh god, it's true. <laughs> Who's that hiding? Is that detective? <laughs> I've been waiting a long time to get some candy out of this piñata. <laughs> oh yeah? What are you gonna do? Hit me with your giant bag of money? Oh god, she's gonna hit me with her giant bag of money! Oh yeah! You're about to be legal tender! I leaned back to avoid the hit. It came so close I could read E Pluribus Unum through the canvas. I had to give it to her. Blunt Force Blanca had a heck of a rotator cuff. Dick, I know you're busy, but do criminals really collect blood? Stop saying blood! Oliver, a little help? Oi, fresh out of prison, new lease on life, ain't you got better things to do? Oh, nothing beats the simple pleasures. Eat, pray, love, bludgeon a detective. Uh, got it, carry on then. Oliver! What, it worked before. Is this what they mean, what they say out for blood? Is it literal? <laughs> Oliver, your job! Right, uh, they call her Blunt Force Blanca. I know that already! <laughs> and it, it's coming back to me, they call her that because... <laughs> Because she hits things, I get it. Yeah, but she prefers blunt force because, ah, uh, uh, oh, because she freaks out at the sight of blood. I said, stop saying blood. Oh God, here, just take it. Please, <laughs> they covered me in blood. That's right, back off, you. Whoa, Morgan Jordan, what did you do? I had a spare blood bag in my pocket. Wasn't that what she wanted? There's blood everywhere. I'm lightheaded. Where did you get that idea? Blood is valuable. I'm barely getting away with my life and this big bag of money. That one was oh negative too. Stay far away from the detective and especially the man in the lab coat. She didn't even mention me. Guess no one will be bothering us now. This is much more fun than I'd expected. Whew. That took it out of me. I'm all hot. Would you like to cool your wrists on a nice, refreshing blood bag? I've got more. No, thank you. With the first thread out of the way, it was time to investigate the hotel. We surveyed the block. It was a rough neighborhood. The kind of place... The kind of place where even the windows spent their lives behind bars. Where the bulbs in the street lights unscrew themselves just to avoid being seen. All right, that's enough. That well-lit door over there, that's our place. Let's go. Hi, welcome to Stacy's Lakes. Hang on, you're that detective. Wow, I just got done reporting the crime. Are you joking? I'm a month late. Hang on, this is Stacy's Lakes? I was gonna come here on vacation. Where are the lakes? They're... Look, we have a long-term landscaping plan from a very reputable firm called Stacy's Rakes, but since we opened, we've learned that customers in this part of town care less about beauty and comfort and serenity and more about anonymity and discretion and multiple exits. Fair enough. Anyway, we're here about the- Yes! It was only a few minutes ago. I just put all our money in the cash bag when the burglar came in and- Wait, there was a burglar? We're not here about a burglar. Oh, though if it's any consolation, she's probably covered in blood right now. Then why are you here? To see the room where the woman went missing. It's upstairs, but that was a month ago. 
Is it going to be another month before someone comes about the crime that just happened now? Maybe. Look, there are a million new crimes happening as we speak, but this cold case is more urgent than any of them. So I don't have time Not to- Not so fast. I haven't been able to rent out that room for a month. Your chief told me I had to leave it how it was until the detective in charge came by and looked at it. And given the financial hardship that represents, I've been selling tickets to see it. That's very creative, but we don't pay to look at crime scenes. Excuse me, good woman. I couldn't help but overhear. Oh, God! Who are you and why are you covered in blood? I haven't the foggiest, but did I hear you say that someone burgled this lovely establishment and took a sack of money? <laughs> For reasons I'm not certain of, I happen to have come by this sack of money and uh, I insist you take it. Why, this... this comes to exactly the amount that was stolen. We're gonna go upstairs now. Okay, sure. Go right ahead. All was quiet in the stairwell, quiet enough for me to realize that the radio on my hip was going bananas. The dispatchers were tripping over their own tongues, calling in crimes from every corner of town. Morgan Jordan's phone was going, too. What do you think you should do, Beverly? No, that's wrong. This is why you haven't been promoted in 14 years. Those employees of mine, why can't they take a risk once in a while? All right, you two, lesson number... Whatever. Crime scene work. For starters, we do not walk into the room. First, we stand here, outside the door, and we look in. That way we don't taint the scene with our presence. What do we see? Look here. A little ribbon draped across the doorway. Probably meant to make sure people didn't walk in and taint the scene with their presence. Very saggy. Probably from how many people have stepped over it. On the other side of the tape, impressive amounts of garbage. Candy wrappers, ticket stubs, pamphlets for tourist attractions, and countless muddy footprints. Based on the taste of this mud, I'd estimate this crime scene has sat neglected for about a month. Uh, good job? We're looking for whatever's left from before all these people walked through. Easy to say, but this was no job for beginners. Hunting down our clue was going to be a real doozy but I couldn't help thinking of what the place had looked like before it became a tourist attraction. Just a bed and a chair, the kind of place made for kidnappings. Soliloquy deserved better. I'll step in and look around, shall I? Beverly, all I'm hearing is problems. I need you to come up with solutions. The sharp-eyed but indescribably wary thief spots a bed. He is sorely tempted to take a nap. But first, he inspects the bed closely for telltale signs of bedbugs. Signs burned inexorably into his mind by several days spent in prison. Beverly, I really can't overstate how impossible it is to get things done with you hounding me like this. What about this pamphlet? I looked to see what Morgan Jordan had found. In his hand, crumpled and almost unreadable under the mud, was a pamphlet advertising a tour company that took visitors to see the homes of the rich and famous. It looks like any of the other garbage in this room. Yes, but if you take a moment to classify the various shoe prints on the floor, you'll find that this is the only object that bears all 17 types. So, it was here before anyone walked through. And when I open it, of course using my sterile gloves and tongs, I find a long hair inside, rolled up as if someone put it there on purpose. Let me see. Look at that. It's right on the page where they talk about Dubs's yacht mansion. What if that's where he's holding her captive? Hold your horses, you two. It's good detective work, but even if this pamphlet is the dirtiest thing in the room, as evidence goes, it's clean. Too clean. Dubs is toying with us again. Maybe, but think about the timing. Earlier, you received a letter from the missing woman, and almost immediately, Dubs abducted you. I suppose it's possible Dubs just decided to come out swinging today after a month of secrecy, but doesn't it seem likelier that someone else is dropping evidence in your path and that Dubs found out and felt the need to create a cover story? Dang, that's twisted. I've had a 30-year career of trying to figure out the motives of dead people. And, and, sorry, I just said that hoping I'd think of something to add to the conversation. Oh, 
And if she is being held on the yacht mansion, then Dobbs was telling you that soliloquy didn't exist while you were standing right next to her. Wouldn't that warm the cackles of his dastardly heart? It is hard to imagine Dubs letting an opportunity like that pass. Either way, it's the only clue we've got. Hello? Hmm, that does sound challenging, Bev. But I say, use your own judgment. Being trusted to figure things out is empowering. The hotel room had told us all it could. We walked outside to figure out our next steps. This was easy. Perhaps I'll moonlight as a detective. Dang, Warden Jordan gets a lot of calls. Maybe he is the protagonist of the episode. Oh wait, this one's me. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, that's not a call. That's a new video from a channel you like. Sure, that sounds important. Welcome back to Stacy's Takes. As crime skyrockets across Noir City, so have random acts of kindness. As I speak... There is not a single old lady waiting to cross the street or cat stuck in a tree anywhere in the greater metropolitan area. What's going on? Has shared hardship inspired people to take civic responsibility in their own hands? Is this a sign that people are really essentially good? Or will all this kindness make us soft? Are we better off getting mugged so we'll be ready when we eventually get mugged? I honestly don't know what to think. Oh, in other good news, this episode is supported by our first sponsor ever, Release the Beast. It's a brand new product from the mother company that needs no introduction and whose name shall not be spoken. Huh? Did she already make another- hey, Shouldn't we hurry up and- Oh, this one's an actual call. It's the chief. All right, we'll just stand here and wait some more. Chief, what's up? <laughs> The chief is in the other room. He was kind enough to lend me his phone when I, clumsy mumsy that I am, left all of my phones in the limo copter. Dubs, what are you doing at the precinct? I couldn't stop thinking about what you said. About how you'd forgotten all about this missing woman nonsense until the chief started reminding you about it. Well... He... Of course, you couldn't know that I'd previously chatted with the chief about that very matter, but it does disappoint. One wonders whether the chief is incompetent or incompliant or both. Oh, the chief is very forgetful. Well, except when he's reminding me about cases. But when I ask him to remember to forget things, he always... Fortunately, Miss Detective, I'm not calling you for solutions or insight. I just thought you might be interested in listening to a little experiment. Chief, are you with us? Loud and clear. Chief, have you met Goon One? He's placing a little cup in front of you. Why don't you have a taste of the contents? I don't see why not. It smells like cold pizza. A food about which I have completely neutral feelings. No! Chief! Leave it! Uh, 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 Constable Dojan here. I'm here to help you solve all your murders and look for any pennies you've lost down skirts, that sort of thing. You know how it is these days. Always looking out. Hear that, detective? A whole new law enforcement professional born screaming into the world. Might this one outdo our dear old chief? Mr. Dudgeon, how are you at following orders? Well, you know how orders are, old chap. Sometimes you gotta do it, sometimes you gotta do something else. It depends. Maybe we'll go have a pint after that. I don't know. You've made your point, Dubs. Leave him alone. But we're only just starting. I told you, this is an experiment. Constable, I'm so sorry. We must see other candidates. Uh, Goon One, give whoever this is another sip. Oh, no, I'm quite... <laughs> Who calls for Lord Lucius Gucius? I am here only to teach tennis. What the? A different one? As I told you, we've been experimenting with new formulas. Surely you didn't think an antidote was the extent of our research? We've come across a recipe that brings out a whole menu of alternates, each one a prospective improvement on the original, and perhaps a permanent one. All it would take is a small daily dose. Might this one be who we're looking for? Good, sir. I would be happy to run this police station. I can absolutely take over and solve all of the murders here, like I did with your mother last night. 
Perhaps not, but we soldier on. Give another sip, goon one. No, sir, I think I'll... Uh, uh, mm. I'm Vanessa Von Boom, and I'm here to tell you that this is the worst cold pizza beverage that you can possibly conceive of. Who made this? It's terrible. Quite the field of candidates for police chief, detective. Care to throw your hat in the ring? Oh, yeah, throw your hat in the ring now. We'll see how that goes. That'll be a good one, won't it? Throw your hat in the ring. Pin the tail on the donkey. Uh, madam, where did you get that broom? Hold her off, goon one. Well, detective, seems with some people, incompetence is incurable. But rest assured, we always find a way. Oh, blimey. That's Dubs? I knew he was a villain, but he's a right cold. Dang. I got the chief in a bind. I gotta get over there. Hold on, Dick. Think for a moment. We have a double advantage right now. Okay. Uh, one. We know where Dubs and at least one of his goons are located. Ideal timing to make a strike. And what's the other one? Dubs has always shown a preference for working behind the scenes. But tonight he's making open displays of force, which... I don't suspect he'd do unless you're very much afraid of something. Most likely, you. That stopped me in my tracks. Could it be true? Could I really be such a threat in Dubs' eyes? A detective of such unequal promise that- Ow! Ow! Oh, my goodness. Did a paper plane just hit you in the eye? Ow, 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 that really- ah. Pick it up. Solomon Sockeye! What are you doing up in that tree? I dropped that letter right in front of you. Several times. You walked past it. Several times. So I folded it into a paper plane and threw it at your head. Now you will pick it up and walk away and start paying some dad gummed attention. So called detective can barely see past the end of his nose. Can't even look me in the eye, you feel so guilty. Wait, Solomon? Solomon! No, oh, I keep thinking of things too late. Somebody, is this another letter from Soliloquy? It appears to be. The first one showed up right after I saw Solomon. He's been the one slipping clues from her, not Dubs. You were right, Morgan Jordan. Dubs was bluffing. What's to say? Here, you read it for me. Can't you read it yourself? No, dude, my eye isn't working. And anyway, I have to operate the music box. All right, geez, fine, let's see. Nice handwriting, working with a pen. 0.5 nib, I'd guess. Left-handed. Just read it. Oh, all right, excuse me for detecting. Let's see. Miss Detective, writing in an agony of haste. Prospects for salvation slimmer than ever. You are soul hope. Man, I was really hoping your voice would fade out and get replaced with hers this time. Can't wait to see who's gonna play her. Captors have moved me. Gave one of them a black eye, but no escape. A black eye? Man, I hadn't guessed Soliloquy could fight. Dick, we still don't know whether she exists. Just because Dubs wants you to believe she doesn't, doesn't mean she does. That's manipulation 101. There's more. New location unknown, but constant hum, constant smell. We all took a deep breath. It's crazy what you can get used to when it's in the air you breathe. But now that I thought about it, the letter smelled like cold pizza. They've moved her to the Release the Beast factory. We were right there. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So this letter points us toward the factory. So now we've got two locations, that and the Yacht Mansion. Could I suggest- Morgan Jordan, you're doing weirdly great, but I need to talk this out. So, Solomon has been delivering these clues, and he's trustworthy, so they're probably both real. And Dubs knows I'm on the trail, which is why he's had her moved, so he probably expects me to show up at the Yacht Mansion. And so it's probably heavily guarded. <sighs> All right, gentlemen, we've got to go to both places. That means splitting up. And since there are three of us, one of us will be going alone. I'll be heading to the factory to save Soliloquy. Who wants to hang with- I'll go, go alone. alone! Okay. Jeez, that felt personal. Wait, Oliver, you might change back into Frank any time, right? Yeah, I'm a team of two all by myself. I just have to leave him a note. Okay, I know I just stood here reading a note for a while, but there's not going to be time for reading notes. Wait, have you even learned to drive? What, heroes can't get dropped off? Dick, if I may... I couldn't help noticing your back seat is full of fedoras and trench coats. If Dubs is expecting you to be alone, I suggest we fulfill his expectations by all dressing as you. That way, we can watch for Dubs at both locations and 
whoever finds him can make it a point to be seen, hence clearing the way for the other party to proceed undetected. As for who goes alone to the yacht mansion, it should be me, because I have a van full of spare body parts, and if I'm attacked, I can throw some limbs around, and they'll think I've been maimed. I don't think either of us can argue with that unique qualification. Very well. I'll set off for the yacht mansion, and I wish you both Godspeed. And it was then that I realized that destiny had been calling for a long time. I just hadn't heard the phone ringing. Thirty years with the dead had all been building to this, to finally saving a life. Beverly, thank you. I feel an enormous respect for you, too. I think, I think he might be the protagonist. Yeah. Oliver and I made our way back to the bar, and for the first time we looked over the factory built onto the back of it. Upwind, downwind, anywhere we went, the stench of cold pizza was inescapable. The place was brand new, but for some reason the neighbors were already calling it the old factory. From a safe position outside, we established a radio connection with Morgan Jordan. Chances were that Dubs had people monitoring all the frequencies, so we pulled an old detective trick and used an infrequency. We listened as Morgan Jordan arrived near the yacht mansion, heard the sound of countless propellers as the limo copter approached, and as Morgan Jordan approached Dubs' security, Oliver and I learned what it sounded like when a spare arm goes flying, hits a semi-automatic weapon, and sends bullets flying in every direction. Basically, it was way too cool to play, and if you think I sound jealous, you should have seen Oliver's face. I sort of thought when we got started that I'd be the one doing that stuff, but it's fine. I guess a 30-year career earns you something. I've been thinking. Do you have any memories before Frank drank that stuff and brought you here? Nothing. Ain't that funny. I knew my name and who I was, but as far as how it all got there, your guess is as good as mine. No memories, huh? And then it hit me. Maybe I should have seen it long before, but Dubs had wanted to overwhelm me, and it had worked. Oliver, in Soliloquy's letter, she said that she doesn't have any memories. I think she must be like you. Cool. So she spent her entire life in captivity. Now we've really got to get her out. I didn't disagree, but I could see Oliver and I were diverging into different conundra. He had the bind of his own short-lived kind in mind. But me? All I could wonder was who Soliloquy had been before Dubs got his hands on her. Morgan Jordan reported that he'd successfully retreated, leaving a crowd of Dubs' goons standing bewildered among a heap of loose body parts. It was time to advance. Around back of the factory, we found an open loading dock. Inside, the place sounded as noisy as it smelled. But all the machines were on automatic, and there wasn't a soul to be seen. We zigzagged between countless stacked flats of canned soda. Finally, we got a view into a big central corridor lined with too many doors, all wired up to a shiny, state-of-the-art electronic lock system. And dead center of the building, the big computer console that held the keys to the kingdom. A couple of Dubs' goons paced back and forth on guard, big clubs over their shoulders. Moment of truth. Now's when we run out and take those guys down. Hold up. No way we can take them both out before they call back up. We've got to get rid of them some other way. Man, it's almost easy. I mean, they're surrounded by a drink that transforms you into a different person. But Dubs has to have told them not to drink it. We could sneak it into their food. Yeah, but it smells like cold pizza. You couldn't possibly not notice it. Huh. You know what else smells exactly like cold pizza? Neither of us spoke, but we would both had the same idea. And lucky for us, I had my neighborhood noodle and pie joint. Ma and Pa's Pa and Za on speed dial. Hello, Pa. Could you deliver a cold Za? Sure, I'd love one with Italian saw. And throw in a couple glasses of Wa. Thanks. Now, Oliver, listen. When this pizza gets here, I need you to yell for the guards so they'll come and eat it. Wait a minute. This whole mission, I haven't gotten to steal anything or attack anyone or do any of the things about which I feel unearned confidence. The one place where I've expressed reasonable self-doubt is my voice. And that is what you ask me to use? Yes, because every criminal in Noir City already knows my voice. The only way they're going to eat it is if they think the pizza is a present from one of their goon friends. But I don't sound like them. Hey, we talked about this. You are far and away the best, 
bad accent haver in your age bracket in this city. All your work has been building to this moment. Make me proud. Here's the pizza. Thanks, Pa. And then we just grab one of these cans of Release the Beast Extra Strength and... Oh, so gross. All right, go for it. Remember, strong and wrong. Hey, you guys, it's me, Goon12. How's it hanging? You working hard or hardly working? Anywho, just wanted to say sup and thanks for your service. And to show that I think you're just Yankee Doodle Dandy, I'm leaving you a big old pizza. Hope that's neato. Okie dokie, see y'all on the flip side. Oh God, that was somehow the most thrilling experience of my life. Hey, Goon 3, did you hear? A fellow member of the Brotherhood of Good Kind brought us a pizza. Yeah, and it's cold. Dude, I love cold pizza. Oh, and it's soggy and carbonated. Is there any more beautiful phrase in the English language than cold, soggy, carbonated pizza? <laughs> <sighs> Oh, y'all, do I really have to do the accent? Yeah, come on, the rest of us have already made fools of ourselves. Oh, God, um, where are we? What are we doing here? Uh, hello there, strangers. How are you? Need a hand with anything? Are you an old lady or perhaps a cat? No, but I saw an old lady cat trapped behind that security interface. If you go swing your club around and hit a lot of stuff, maybe you can set her free. Swing a club, you say? I, who have literally never done anything to anyone? Very well. Stand back, old cat woman. The crashes and bangs were like a symphony, and buried deep in it was the sweet percussion of doors unlocking. We started to turn the building upside down, hunting for soliloquy. It should have felt like the end of the race, but for all my bluster I could feel Dubs' jaws closing around me. Dubs had told me straight that soliloquy was invented, that she was tailor-made to take me back to the worst moment of my past. And sure, he'd been lying, but he'd still been right. That was how Dubs did it. He held the truth right in front of you, contorted just enough to make you doubt it. All the better to enjoy the moment when you realized you'd been had. Oliver was the one who found her, soaking wet and starting to get cold. It was a woman I'd never seen before. Could have been anybody. Seated on the floor, back against the wall, a piece of paper in her lap that said, Wrong choice. And next to her, the vat of Release the Beast they must have drowned her in, that they'd been drowning her in for who knows how long. Oh my god. I'm sorry, Dick. I bet she was gonna be played by, like, Judy Dench or someone. Should we carry her out so she can at least have a funeral or something? No. Funerals are for the living, and no living soul ever got to know this woman. She was created to hide someone else, and that someone is buried too deep for us to find. We trudged back to the great open heart of the factory. The destruction of the computer console had started a small fire of loose paper and cardboard and the remade goons, so newly initiated into life, were reverently toasting marshmallows. I wonder if we shouldn't light the whole place up. That would eliminate the substance that allows you to exist, buddy. I know, but I've been looking for something objectively impressive to do since I got here, and I think this is it. Don't make me think too hard about it. It didn't take much to persuade the new goons to help us make the fire as big as we could. Although first they talked us into a round of marshmallows. It was nice. I called the fire department as we retreated to an overlook. I told the goons life would be more fun if they got out and made the most of the next little while. Didn't have the heart to tell them why. Oliver and I watched as the flames in the fire trucks mingled their complimentary reds. I looked over to see what he thought of his handiwork. You know, I think all that faith business was just peer pressure. Yeah, deep down, I think I'm an arsonist. Lots of folks don't find their calling before they go. Anything else in the time you've got left? You know what else I've felt a wild craving for all my life but never tried? 
sleeping. That sounds like the next great adventure right now. Hey, Frank's a good kid. Look out for him. I will. Play me some finale music. All I've got is this. Not remotely what I had in mind, but you did your best. <sighs> Dick. Whoa. Solomon? Ending with a fireworks display, I see. Just the kind of kitsch I'd expect from you. It was Oliver's idea. I know. I was watching. So you found her. And you figured it out? Yeah. Here. She wrote you this before they changed her. It's too bad she didn't live, but then again, who does? Hey, I want to say thank you. I don't know what your part in this whole thing was, but you took a risk sneaking those letters out. It's good to know I've got friends. Oh, so you haven't figured it out. All right. I'm the one Dubs hired to kidnap your old friend and stand guard over her. I've been with her every day since she first set foot in town. I agreed not to speak to or help the woman I kidnapped. When they decided to force feed her a daily dose of release the beast, she became a different person. You knew who she was and you didn't- Don't preach at me, detective. I dropped you every clue I could get away with. Not my fault you weren't quick enough to put things together. Anyway, I didn't show up so you could cry on my shoulder. I need you to pass something on to Frank when he wakes up. Here. It's Oliver's Bachelor of Bigness and Badness. Wait, what? The test I gave him earlier tonight? Crime I judged. You stood there and described the scene for me. Yeah, a lot has happened since then. Anyway, you said he didn't measure up. We always say that. We don't find the best by seeing who can follow rules. Everyone gets a bad score at first. The real test is what they do afterwards. That's what I've been watching. Tell Frank. Considering Oliver only existed for about a week, he was as big and as bad as they get. Not a compliment just a fact. And detective, think about laying low for a while. Life's about to get a lot tougher. Welcome back to Stacy's Takes. The news just keeps on coming. The unprecedented crime wave that terrorized Noir City has come to a crashing halt. And why? Was it police action? Community activism? A change of heart? Nope. It's drugs. Turns out all the released prisoners were addicted to a substance that suddenly ceased to exist. And they now lie racked with agony. Are drug withdrawals an acceptable solution for crime? Does anyone have control over anything? I honestly don't know what to think. Oh, also... This show was allegedly sponsored by Release the Beast, but the check bounced. Yes, faithful listeners, on this show we never draw a paycheck or a conclusion. <laughs> the show is now, for all practical purposes, sponsored by Stacy Steaks, Shakes, Wakes, Rakes, Lakes, Fakes, and Cakes. Are you tired? Grind got you down. Wouldn't it be nice if someone else did the work for a change? Longing for a big chunk of meat? A memorial service? A getaway to a place where nobody knows your name. Can anyone do them all? I honestly don't know what to think. Also, next time on Stacy's Takes, has anyone in Noir City ever heard an actual English person? When I got home, I stood under the shower head, fully dressed until the water ran cold. And then I read her letter. It was older than I'd expected, dated before the hotel even reported her missing. She said, Hey, partner. Just writing to let you know I'm on my way to find you. Still haven't gotten any answers to my last 20 letters. I may be out of the game, but I'm starting to suspect you don't want to see me. Or, for all I know, you're held captive somewhere and you're screaming for me to show up. I guess it wouldn't be so bad coming out of retirement to save your scrawny behind. Again. Anyway, there's a reason I'm not taking no for an answer. The chief hasn't got long, and he deserves to hear from you before he goes. I'm not taking his side. It's still got a way on you, too, and the world deserves to see what you can do at your best. 
Maybe I'm crazy, but I keep thinking all you need is a good shake by the shoulders, and I've always been first in line to give you those. So ready or not, here I come. Your old partner in crime, Shirley Shanks. The next night, I was right back where I started, at the bar with Bart. One day I was riding high, and now the stock and the recipes are all burned. My funding got pulled, and all I have to my name is a half-finished bathroom 20 feet in the air. How about that? Life took me down in a hot second, and I never saw it coming. I've got to get better at this deduction thing. Tell me again how you figured it out. Wasn't so complicated. An old friend got in touch to ask me to do something important. Dubs had someone reading my mail, and he didn't like what she was proposing. So he kept her letters from me. And when she came to town, he had her kidnapped. And her news had a deadline, so all Dubs had to do was run out the clock. He kept me busy, made me promise not to investigate, and he invested in your drink, thinking it might transform everyone in Noir City into his perfect lackeys. Didn't work out that way, but he still got one use out of it. When I finally got on her trail, he hid her from me by turning her into someone else. I told you, you got to share these stories. That deserves a tip. Put it in my ko-fi. Anyway, it's not all neat and tidy. Frank's a mess. Oliver and a bunch of other people don't exist anymore. And apparently it's a real bad time to be in the pizza business. And who knows, maybe if I had just let it go, Dubs would have let her go too. Nah, Bart. Deduction is all well and good, but just because you can detect it doesn't mean you can affect it. There's just one thing I haven't figured out. Probably never will. What's that? The music box I found in Rick's office. It's the reason I broke my promise to Dubs and started looking for her. Rick was a bad guy, but this made me wonder how he got that way. Who he used to be. Might this have represented some kind of memory Here, that- let me see that. Well, for one thing, it's covered in gold plating. It's... Well, I'll be. Chief! It is Chief, isn't it? Good morning, Dick. Or whatever time it is. How are you feeling after last night? Funny you should mention last night. I don't remember anything. But I woke up with a splitting headache. Anyway, you wanted me to call? Yeah, question. If... Hypothetically, some mail addressed to me got misdirected to someone like Rick. Any idea how I might track it down? You know, I don't touch the mail. It's hard enough to keep this department going without micromanaging. If you didn't find it when you cleaned out his office, chances are he used it for one of those departmental bonfires he was so fond of organizing. I figured. That's all I needed, boss. One more thing, Dick. Take a vacation. Judging by the headache, I must have taken some time off myself last night. And I don't want to be the cow painting the goat brown. Thanks, Chief. Never change. So I put away my badge, sold the music box, and used the cash to buy a one-way train ticket. The only thing harder than staying in Noir City is leaving. It's uphill all the way, and no matter when you depart, the trains all arrive at the same time. Too late. Anyway, you can never get this city to commit to anything as clear as a border. The place never stops sprawling, and for all I know, its sinewy suburbs may have long since wrapped around the place I used to call home. But then, maybe they didn't. Maybe it's the days that are surprisingly long there. Maybe I'll need a repertoire of heavy-handed metaphors about the sun. Let's see, the sun outside Noir City is like... like a really bright street light. <sighs> okay, I can do better than that. The sun outside of Noir City is like, uh, grapefruit. Bigger than most things in its category and intense, but in a nice way. No, oh, this is hard. But I've got the whole ride to work on it. Uh, it's like... The city is like no other. She's beautiful, unpredictable, dangerous, like a cat inviting you to touch her belly. Noir City is a mystery, wrapped in an enigma, covered in bacon, and deep fried for five minutes, then coated in sprinkles. 
dangerous prickles. I wish the same could be said for our scum, but in Noir City, a low life is a low life. Busters, bruisers, thugs, goons, they're all the same. Be bad, get paid. No nuance, no art, same story, same ending, every time. I guess that's one thing that the Reaper and I have in common. One way or another, the bad guys always come to us to be measured. When I see them on my table, I'd like to imagine the last thing that went through their minds. Probably something like, I thought I was special. Guess not. Who'd have thunk? It's the elites that really make me want to gag. Kingpins are nothing but criminals who figured out bureaucracy. To some, a 20-story yacht mansion might seem to be the ultimate sign of a life well lived, but the man in that high castle isn't immortal, and sooner or later he'll end up downtown with me, wearing nothing but a towel and a toe tag. I like to think that tonight I gave him a taste of that future. Nothing evokes mortality like watching your hired goons clean up a pile of miscellaneous limbs. After scattering those limbs, I'd retreated to watch the cleanup myself for a while. I needed to know when the goons had moved on so I could commence phase two. I expected to see some security lingering, but I was able to walk right up to the front door. The only explanation was that someone was waiting for me. Rain poured down the faces of the gargoyles perched high overhead, like stone guardians were crying their hearts out. Maybe this is what they meant by trickle-down economics. Can I help you? The name's Jordan. Morgan Jordan. Dr. Morgan B. Jordan. The B stands for Borden, and I'm here because I'm the protagonist of this story. Now, you have two choices. You can take me to the woman you're keeping hostage, or I can start spilling blood all over the place. To be clear, I mean, I won't spill your blood. This isn't that kind of a threat, although it is a threat. Awesome. Wait, what? I mean, I brought my own blood to spill. Wait, no. I, that's even more confusing. It's my blood, not my blood. I got a whole satchel full of blood bags, okay? And I'm not afraid to use them. The point is, it's going to stain real bad. No, dude, don't, please. We just finished mopping up all the carpets. Well, then you better get to cooperating. All right, fine. I'll do whatever you say, bruh. <laughs> just don't make a mess. Take your shoes off and follow me. The goon with the black eye showed me through the maze of corridors, deep into the bowels of the ship house, down the spiral stairs, and into the dungeon itself. The only thing I could think was how strange it was for a man like Doves to leave his home operated by such a skeleton crew. Excuse me, Mr. Goon? <laughs> yeah. How much further until we get where we're going? It's right up here at the end of this conversation. <laughs> Are you the only guard working here tonight? Oh yeah, Mr. Dove wanted every available Goon focus on Project Homecoming. <laughs> They're all meeting tonight at Four Shadows Hotel and Ballroom to go over the plan. <laughs> what exactly is Project Homecoming. <laughs> Beats me. I'm not there going over the plan. Fair enough. Okay, here we go. The prisoner is locked inside of this room. <laughs> Be careful. She's a puncher. <laughs> I gave the goon a generous tip, thanked him for his time, and then unbolted and pushed open the door. <laughs> Hello? My name is Morgan Jordan. Hi, Morgan Jordan. It's funny. For a second there, when I saw your fedora and trench coat, I thought you were someone else. Are you here to kill me? Kill you? No. I'm far too squeamish for that. I'm here to rescue you. I barely even know who I am anymore. Those goons have been feeding me that Jekyll Hyde juice for days. All I know is that I came to this town looking for my old partner. His name Hold is- Hold that thought. I need to call my associate at NCPD and let him know he got the clues backwards. I found you- so that means he's walking into a pointless distraction that was set up by the main bad guy. You've reached Richard Detective. Hi, Dick. Good news. 
I... Uh, unfortunately, I can't come to the phone right now. Seriously? Voicemail? Yeah, seriously. I'm going to be leaving town for a while. Something came up. Something that reminded me of a moment in a life I left behind. And I've decided it's time to stop running from the past. I'll be spending the next two to three weeks confronting some demons. Where I'm going, there isn't cell phone coverage. If you need me, or if this is some kind of emergency and you have to tell me something important, please get in touch with Dr. Morgan Borden Jordan at the Noir City Morgan Organ Storage. He'll know how to reach me. What? No! I won't! I'll see you next episode. For now, I'm going home. The voicemail box you reached is full. Goodbye. Son of a bitch! That was Noir City Blues, Episode 7, Me and My Shadows, Part 2. You heard the voices of Jack Townsend, Jeff Quash, Erica Durr, Helen Jacks, Matthew Morris, James Lanius, Andrew Ferrier, High Priest Roby, Rebecca Reesness, and Helen Schmel. It was written by Andrew Ferrier with an epilogue by Jack Townsend and big creative help from Jeff Quash. And the roles of Constable Dudgeon, Lord Lucius Gucius, and Vanessa Von Voom were improvised straight from the one-of-a-kind mind of James Lanius. Stay around for a bit more of that. You can find us and share your thoughts on YouTube or Instagram at The Snake's Paw. You can support the show on ko-fi, ko-fi.com slash The Snake's Paw, and thesnakespaw.com has it all. One last thing before we share some outtakes. We are looking for stories from listeners for our Halloween Kaidan episode. For details, see our latest announcement just up the feed. Hope to hear from you, and thanks as always for listening. See y'all soon. Does she, is she scared of blood or is she like turned on by it? Uh, awful. Just like willies. Oh, great. Okay. I'll do that differently. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? What are we doing here? Oh God, that's so bad. I don't even know what that is. Air-I. Where are we? No, 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 W, just air. Where are we? Air, are Air, are we? No, 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 we just air, are we? Air, are we? Air, are we? <laughs> it's just, it's just vowels. Air, are we? I do we over there. Transformation sound. The chief turns into Vanessa Von Voom, a no-nonsense barmaid. All right. <laughs> <laughs> We should have had many more drinks before we started this session. We can come back to it if you want. No, no, it's good. I'm Vanessa Von Voom, <laughs> and I'm here to tell you that this is the worst cold pizza beverage that you can possibly conceive of. Who made this? I had better cold pizza beverage from Paula, not Paula Abdul, what's the one who cooks? Paula the <laughs> God, uh, just make a threat. Like oh, you that's all I need. Just like to, just to just as the button at the end. It, this is all gorgeous. Just a quick threat. Um, if you throw your hat in the ring, I'll come for your hat. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's that good.